This is CBC Radio. In just a moment, the Air Force. But first, this message from Air Force Vice President in charge of personnel and supervisor of the spelling committee, Professor Hieronymus Wombat. Professor Wombat. Hello, this is Professor Hieronymus Wombat. I'll spell that for you. W-O-M-B-A-T. And I'm delighted to be with you here on the radio today, T-O-D-A-Y. As you know, I had an unfortunate accident last week, W-E-A-K, <laughs> when I fell flat on the ice, A-S-S. <laughs> anyway, now I am feeling fine, T-R-U-S-S. <laughs> now I shall introduce to you the person who is going to introduce today's show, S-H-O-U-G-H. Normally, you see, we don't have a live announcer, which does not, of course, mean we have a dead one either. E-T-H-E-R. Although at CBC, C-B-C, -C, you can never be sure, S-U-R-E. But the fact is that our opening announcement is usually on tape, T-A-P-E. But anyway, to make a short story long, B-O-R-I-N-G, here, live and in person, is Mr. Alan McPhee, F-E-E. enough applause. <laughs> C-L-A-P. We don't want it going to Mr. McPhee's head. Okay, Mr. McPhee, will you please introduce the Air Force? Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Royal Canadian Air... Actually, I you know it's silly to bring me in a cold day like this just to make a 10-second opening announcement. I mean, what's the use? All I do is say, now, ladies and gentlemen, the Royal Canadian Air Force. And then you don't hear from me again for half an hour until I come back with a closing announcement. Well, let's face it. I've got better fish to fry. <laughs> I have. Holy smokes. I could be home with my trusty jar of jelly gin. <laughs> I could. Writing out my ad libs for Eclectic Circus, which is a splendid. Oh. Oh. <laughs> totally unexpected. <laughs> Eclectic Circus, which is my own very excellent program. Heard in most of these stations just after midnight. Monday through Friday, and on CBC stereo stations every Saturday morning. It's a darb. It's a charming show, gloriously hosted by <laughs> your delightful host, me, Alan Mc... <laughs> I'll repeat the name, Alan McPhee. The, uh, <laughs> thanks. Gee, this is nice here. The bon vivant... The bon, the bon vivant broadcasting the lovable rascal of live radio, the wit of the wireless, the magnificent modulator. Stop I could go on. I... Stop the music. Stop, Stop the music. That's well, quite enough. Thank you, Mr. McPhee. If you, if you don't want to announce the introduction, uh, we'll get Elwood Glover out of mothballs and uh, maybe he can do it. Oh, no, you won't. No, you won't. Then get on with the introduction, please. Oh, gosh. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Alan McPhee, and now here's the air force. Come, Mr. McPhee, a little more enthusiasm, please. Okay, okay. Better. I'll do it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Alan McPhee. And now here's here first. <laughs> Tell you what, McPhee, we'll make a nice deal with you, right? You give us a nice introduction, and we'll make all your dreams come true. Uh, You'll yeah. get your own whoopee cushion with a picture of Lloyd Robertson on it. Uh -huh. <laughs> we'll invite the network brass for afternoon tea, and we'll give them X-Lax fudge. Uh -huh. We'll buy you a case of jelly gin. We'll pay for your year's supply of Grecian formula. Uh, that's not enough. It's all right. Uh, industrial strength underarm Grecian formula. Well, that's, that's uh, really not uh, <laughs> what I had in mind. Okay, how about this? We'll start an Alan McPhee for Prime Minister campaign. Oh. Oh, yeah. I kind of like the sound of that. Uh, would you try that one again? Alan McPhee for Prime Minister. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, gee. Isn't it wonderful? Ring bells, beat gongs. That's always been my secret dream. Me, Prime Minister McPhee. Gee, I can see it now. My, my smiling face and the $50 bills. <laughs> Max Ferguson doing Prime Minister McPhee impersonations. <laughs> That's wonderful. CBC Radio filling the land with 24 hours a day of eclectic circus. <laughs> 
24 and a half in Newfoundland. Keep it up. <laughs> yeah. A vote for McBee is a vote for me. <laughs> Listen, I love it. When can you start the campaign? As soon as you give us a nice introduction. Well, and in that case... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Royal Canadian Air Force. It's the first Canada. Nineteen seventy-eight, Canada's year of decision. Make this the year where you make the decision. Make this the election year where your vote makes a difference. Make this the year where you say, to keep the true north strong and free, we need the leadership of Alan McPhee. <laughs> Does Canada want four more years of this? Well, to be honest, Mr. Speaker, uh, I've heard what the opposition says, and uh, frankly, uh, I don't give a poop. And could Canada possibly want four years of this? Mr. Speaker, as member for the Rocky Mountain riding, soon to become Bow River riding, I believe, I, I hope, I'm uh, uh, given to understand that it will uh, still be my riding, uh, so I'm told. Uh, Mr. Speaker, and as leader, probably the youngest leader my party has ever had in its long, distinguished history of progressing conservatively <laughs> in the continuing role as Her Majesty's loyal opposition. As I stand here today, Mr. Speaker, in my three-piece, single-breasted, pinstripe suit, <laughs> my hair neatly combed, it seems to me, Mr. Speaker, there's only one question facing this House today. One question, Mr. Speaker. And I would like to answer that question with a question. What is the question? <laughs> This year, when it comes to the election choice, vote for The Voice. Hello, hello, hello out there in Parliament land. This is me, Alan McPhee, your fearless leader of Canada's newest party. The Alan McPhee Jelly Gin Cocktail Party. <laughs> Dedicated to bringing back the values that made Canada great. Committed to putting the party back into politics. Elect Alan McPhee as Prime Minister. Remember Sir John A. Macdonald. He brought this country together and kept it together, despite a life dedicated to alcohol, fast women, and cheap thrills. And I promise to carry on in the very same great tradition. A message from the Alan McPhee Jelly Gin Cocktail Party, where Mr. McPhee says, Let us face the future bravely, with courage, strength, and truth, plus a great big jug of English gin and a jar of French vermouth. Mr. Jerry McCrary of Portage La Prairie is suing a Dr. Dan Dunn of Brandon. We have Mr. McCrary on the phone from La Prairie. Barbara? Mr. McCrary? Yes? You're suing Dr. Dan Dunn. Why? What did Dan Dunn do? Boy, d during the Cuthbert Grant Festival here, a picture of the Queen was unveiled and everyone stood up and sang except Dan. It's not what Dan Dunn did, it's what Dan Dunn didn't do. So you just feel that Dan Dunn should have done something he didn't do? I do. Well, why didn't he? He busted his butt. He didn't? He did. Dan carried the picture of the Queen into the hall and he fell. Someone had just waxed the floor. The Queen? Is this Elizabeth? No, it was one of the regular cleaning ladies. But the picture is of Queen Elizabeth. It's a picture of the Queen of the Cuthbert Grant Festival. Who is Cuthbert Grant? Exactly. What did you sing? For he's a jolly good fellow. For the Queen? For Dan Dunn. Mr. McCrary, why are you suing? When I tried to make Dan stand, he hit me. Knowing Dan done as I do, I didn't think Dan would do what he done. Do. Did. Dan? Done. Did. Do. So you'll sue. Where will Dan Dunn get the money from? Don Dunn. Dan Dunn's dad. Uh, does he not see any inequity? Uh, Dan. Of inequity. <laughs> he must have raised a ruckus. A din. Don said any man who would do what that man Dan did and then have Don, Don Dan's dad, carry the can for Dan is not a man. Jerry McCrary in Portage La Prairie? Yes. Bye bye. <laughs> Ship is gone where the good old 
donkeys go And no more on this earth will he roam Hello friends, this is Boswell Bagley once again for Factory Gravestone Outlet. <laughs> factory Gravestone, the home of first quality custom gravestones at less than half the factory price. And you know friends, now's the time of year when the ice and snow of winter melt away, uncovering all sorts of little dead doggies and birdies and pussycats in our backyards. They're tiny frozen little corpses preserved by nature's magic in the very spot where we left them tied up just before the big blizzard. <laughs> Or perhaps it's the naughty budgie who flew out the window in the middle of January when you wouldn't say, who's a pretty boy? <laughs> or the rascally little gerbil that disappeared on Boxing Day and you thought he was in the sofa cushion. <laughs> yes, this is the time of year when their tiny little remains emerge from underneath all that snow. Well, I'm Boswell Bagley, here to say that Factory Gravestone can make your loss a little lighter thanks to our generous 50% cash discount on our many off-the-rack pet markers. That's right, our wide selection of tombstones for pets are on sale this week for only 50% below our normal everyday low prices. We've got granite doggies, marble budgies, bronze pussycats, and sandstone goldfish, all complete with charming memorial verses that read as follows. I owe him a debt worth more than a jet, for I won't soon forget the memories he let me have since we met. <laughs> On my hall carpet he will never again wet. <laughs> So don't delay, come on out today, check around for those dead little pets and rush, rush, rush to Factory Gravestone Outlet before the warm weather hits. We've got everything you need, including our just open 10-acre Animal Heaven Pet Cemetery and Amusement Park. That's right, come on out to Factory Gravestone where we say, when your cheeky little budgie has croaked his last word, bring him out to Factory, we'll handle your bird. <laughs> Canada, monsieur. You are a new immigrant? Yes, yes, that's right. Yes, yes. I'm from England. Yes, yes, yes. New start. Brave new world. Turn over a new leaf. Yes, yes. Strike out in fields anew. Yes. Give it the old university try, as you people say. Yes, yes, yes. Prepare to take any hardship that life has to offer. Yes. You're going to Toronto? No, 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 no. Quebec, Quebec. Me, the wife, eight kids, all to Quebec. Oh, yes, yes. To Quebec. <laughs> going to Quebec. You? Yes. Quebec? Oh, yes. Why Quebec? Well, we read your literature. Wonderful. Make a wonderful feature in wonderful Quebec, it said. Lovely pictures. Everyone going around with a horse and, ca and calluses. Kalesh. Gesundheit. <laughs> and then you've got that, that lovely big jolly snowman. What's his name? The Von Homo? Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> oh, we couldn't resist it. Quebec. We said, we looked at all the provinces. Quebec, it had to be. Really? Yes. Oh, yes. The book said, go to wonderful Quebec, where everyone is welcome. A friendly culture that holds out its hands to newcomers. You do hold out your hands, don't you? Oui, oui, mais not in the way you think. Oh. <laughs> Well, I tell you, they're doing a real selling job over in London for Quebec. Everyone's going to Quebec. I think it is my duty to warn you, monsieur. Quebec is now unilingual. Well, that's all right, so are we. <laughs> I mean, the wife's very straight-laced. None of that French stuff for her. I mean, you know. <laughs> not having that. Oh, no, 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 no. There's now only one language in Quebec, and that is French. Well, that'll be nice. Yeah, that'll You're be nice. not going to say, how dare you do that to us? Who won the battle of the Plains of Abraham and moved to Ontario? No, 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 no. That'll be lovely. That'll be fine. Moji, look, I, I don't think you realize what this means. Your eight kids will be brought up in French. Good, good, good. Nothing like a cosmopolitan education. Just a thing. Lovely, lovely, good, good. Don't you realize what that means? Your children will be Quebecois and will despise you for being an outsider, an Anglais. You don't have to sell me on it. Don't They'll worry. Leave your <laughs> home. They'll leave your home at the first opportunity. Like I said, you don't have to sell me on it. <laughs> Do you realize the kind of life you'll have the minute you get settled in the job, your company will move to Ontario? Like I said, you don't have to sell me on it. But all the workers around you, they will make it quite clear they don't want you to work. I'm used to that. I belong to a union back home. No problem. No problem. <laughs> they will not accept you unless you are a Quebecois. Well, I'll become one. I'll, 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 I'll wear one of those sackcloth dresses with a belt and wear a turkey on my head. <laughs> a duke. Gesundheit. <laughs> I can become a Quebecois. I learn to drive with no hands. <laughs> I'll build a little shrine on the front lawn to René Levesque. Drink Dutch gin to help along my remaining kidney. I'll do it all, don't you worry. <laughs> do anything you like, monsieur, but you have to be born Quebecois. You cannot become one. Ah, oh, listen, let's stop beating around the bush. Are you trying to tell me something? Look, can't you get it to your head? We don't want you, your wife or your eight kids in Quebec. What would happen if we let you and your kind in? As far as we know, you could go off to Shikutsumi and start a secret English underground. 
On the surface, you pretend to be Québécois and have another eight kids, but underground. <laughs> You'll be eating your Yorkshire pudding and playing your bagpipe. <laughs> oh, no. All over Quebec, we'd have secret underground cells of Anglais waiting for the day when you can parachute Prince Charles in here as leader of the Parti Québécois. <laughs> no, monsieur, as long as I am here, that will never happen. Oh, excellent, bravo. Magnifique, fantastic, monsieur Labrosse. Well, well, you, 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 you are not an Anglais? No, no, I am from headquarters. I'm just checking, you understand. <laughs> Hello again, this is me, Alan McPhee, here to say that you're listening to the Royal Canadian Air Force from CBC Radio. And remember, starting next week, Air Force comes your way at a new time, new day on CBC Radio Network stations. Starting next week, catch the Air Force on Sundays at 2.35 Newfoundland time, 2.05 Atlantic, 1.05 Eastern Central and Mountain, and 4.05 Pacific time. Other days, other times on Air Force affiliate stations and at the usual time on CBC Stereo. But starting next week, follow the farce to Sundays on CBC Network Radio and make Sunday a fun day with the Royal Canadian Air Force. And now live from the entertainment capital of Canada, Moncton, New Brunswick, it's 90 minutes to live. <laughs> And now, here's tonight's substitute host, Lothar Negworthy. Hi there, hello, nice to see you. Nice to be here, good evening, hello, have a nice day. Hi there, hello, nice to see you. Sorry, Peter can't be with us tonight. Uh, last week, 90 Minutes to Live came from the other entertainment capital of Canada, L.A. <laughs> Lethbridge, Alberta. <laughs> so, uh, Peter and the gang had to travel all the way here from way out there, but the bus broke down. Anyway, thank you, holy applause, thank you. Anyway, I'm your substitute host, Lothar Negworthy, and I'd like to welcome our substitute orchestra, and of course, our substitute audience. <laughs> thank you, nice to be here, have a nice day, nice to see you, we'll be right back, don't go away, more to come, nice to see you, have a nice day, it's been wonderful, nice to see you, have a nice day, goodbye. A season to celebrate. CBC Television, where the action is, where Wednesdays are wonderful. The fun begins at 8 o'clock when the King of Kensington moves to its new time slot, uprooting the René Simar show, which now moves to Sundays at 10.30 in the spot formerly occupied by Ombudsman, which is being pushed over to Tuesday, shifting celebrity cooks to Fridays, forcing Tommy Hunter Country to slide back to Mondays, resulting in Front Page Challenge being shunted to the old Hymn time slot. On CBC Television, where the action is. <laughs> Well, hi there, welcome back, nice to see you again, glad you stuck around, welcome back, nice to have you with us, have a nice day, and right now I'd like to welcome my first guest here on 90 Minutes to Live, physical fitness expert, Mr. Ed Allen. I, I'd like to welcome Mr. Allen, but unfortunately he can't be with us. He was working out at home on his Ed Allen brand mini gym, five minutes a day and you feel okay, ten minutes or more and your muscles get sore with the ropes and pulleys you tie to the door. Anyway, he was uh, working out at home and somebody opened the door. <laughs> Mr. Allen suffered a rare muscle strain, and it will be uh, several weeks before he can walk without winking. <laughs> so uh, we decided to replace Mr. Allen with a substitute guest, the famous writer and economist, Mr. John Kenneth Galbraith. Uh, apparently, Mr. Galbraith was the person who opened Ed Allen's door, <laughs> and he got seen right in the pulleys, causing a... Rare muscle strain, and it will be several weeks before Mr. Galbraith can squat without squinting. <laughs> so, why don't we see if there's any interesting people right here in our studio audience? <laughs> I see a person out here uh, with an interesting slogan on her T-shirt. Uh, <laughs> what exactly does that say, ma'am? Мені дуже приємно, що ви мене запитаєте, бо я думаю, що ви такі кіт. Вона пише, поцілуй мене, я українка. Тоді смок comes out your ears. Uh, could you run that past me in the international language of air travel? Oh, uh, sure, big boy. <laughs> On my t-shirts, it says, Mpotiluy mene ukrainka. 
which means kiss me, I'm Ukrainian. I see. <laughs> and, and what about the part ending smoke comes out your ears? First you kiss me. <laughs> well, uh, nice to see you. <laughs> Glad you could make it. Uh, have a nice day, and uh, let's move on uh, over here to uh, the other half of our audience, uh, sir. Uh, <laughs> you look like you might have something interesting to say. Uh, wh what's your name? McSweeney. Rollo McSweeney. Rollo McSweeney Jr. Rollo McSweeney Sr. was my father. Rollo McSweeney. Hi. And uh, what would you like to say? Uh, I'd like to say uh, hello. I'm Rollo McSweeney Jr. Rollo McSweeney Sr. is my father. I'm Rollo McSweeney, and I am deeply involved with the fight for equal rights for moose. 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 Yeah. Like, if we're not careful, the moose could be an endangered species. For years, the moose has been discriminated against. Like, 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 what's our national animal, eh? The beaver. Exactly. Ah, yucka, poo poo, caca. Dirty beaver. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A crummy, stinking, little, scrounging, dirty, buck tooth beaver. The Ukrainian of the animal world. Hey. Uh, Hold out your cheeks, lady. <laughs> now you just look at the moose, eh? The moose is regal, eh? Oh, nice big royal moose looks just like the queen. And what happens, <laughs> eh? Every time a couple goes to a fancy sit-down restaurant, they order chocolate mousse and... Two more moose are gone. <laughs> Mr. McSweeney Jr., there is no moose in chocolate mousse. Oh. Okay, then what, 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 look, 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 look at what happened to that hockey player, eh? Moose Vasco, eh? Moose Vasco. He was forced to leave because the teams discriminated against moose. Moose Vasco was a man, not a moose. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, well, I only listen to the games on the radio. <laughs> well, uh, Rollo, it's been nice chatting with you, but I, I think we'd better let you run along. I'm not finished yet. How many people appreciate the true majestic beauty of a moose standing on a deserted highway at dawn, just waiting to lock antlers with a truck? <laughs> and did you know there isn't one moose in the Toronto Symphony? Not even in the horn section? And moose are fed up with those crummy, there ain't no moose in moose jaw jokes. And listen, you never see two moose going to a costume party dressed up like a man. Moose are too smart. Moose are terrific. We should put moose in the parliament. I say let's make a moose solicitor general. Well, what makes you think we'd want an animal as solicitor general? Because it's a tradition. <laughs> We had a fox, and he was replaced by a turkey. Give Moose a chance! Heaven knows there is great confusion besetting this country today. We in the Air Force are not willing to add to that confusion. However, we are proud to introduce a man who is. The member for Kicking Horse Pass, the Honorable David J. Broadfoot. Speaking of national unity, and who isn't, the thing is, Canadians don't pay attention. We don't. Take our history. Somebody did. <laughs> That's why I've always identified with the Acadians. The same thing happened to them. They were expelled for not knowing what was going on. Same thing happened to the Indians. They were under the impression that we had come here as friends. They weren't paying attention. <laughs> the fur traders lived by the golden rule, do unto others, then disappear quick. <laughs> the only thing the fur traders willingly shared was chicken pox. And that cost three pelts apiece. In the uprising in Upper Canada against the family compact, the rebels were not paying attention. All their planning took place in a tavern. A tavern! So what did the family compact do? Cancel the liquor license. <laughs> and so all the rebel plans went awry, and the rebels had no idea where they were going. A tradition that distinguishes Canadians to this very day. Later on, when John A. Macdonald prophesied that one day Canada would become a swinging country, Louis Riel should have been paying attention. <laughs> he swang in Regina. 
But that could never happen today. Everyone knows you can't swing in Regina. <laughs> and years later, when Mrs. King asked her husband, Mr. King, to take precautions, he wasn't paying attention, and soon little Mackenzie came into the world <laughs> and went on to become our first leader ever to choose a dog as deputy prime minister, <laughs> establishing a dangerous precedent for showing us where the country was going. <laughs> was anyone paying attention in the 1960s when René Levesque told Jean Lesage he was not happy with his leadership, and Jean replied, so go form a party of your own and become Prime Minister of Quebec yourself. <laughs> René was paying attention. <laughs> then came the Canadian Centennial Year celebrations and the distinctive Canadian flag and Expo 67, and the famous Canadian lack of identity was allowed to disappear. This lack of identity that we had always cherished, this absence of ethos, this national emptiness, this patriotic void, this complex of inferiority that Canadians thrive on was callously cast aside and replaced by a vibrant, confident self-awareness that is totally un-Canadian. <laughs> Gone are the days when you could pass through the world speaking English and be mistaken for an American, speak French and be mistaken for a Belgian, wear a maple leaf and be mistaken for a syrup collector. <laughs> In some of the third world countries, people used to shout mistakenly, Yankee go home. Today they know you're Canadian, they throw you straight in prison. <laughs> Yes, we've lost our lack of identity, but thank God we have not lost our lack of direction. Consider the state of our economy today. Look at this country. Our natural resources sold out, our gas and oil running dry, wildlife dying off, our industries non-competitive, a million unemployed, an 89 cent dollar. <laughs> Things that would cause a revolution anywhere else. But thank God there's one thing that saves us in Canada. No one is paying attention. <laughs> The Royal Canadian Air Force, starring Roger Rabbit, Dave Broadfoot, Don Ferguson, Lou Bagoy, and John Morgan, with the sound effects of Alex Sheridan. And a special guest star appearance by our next Prime Minister, Alan McPhee. Air Force is written by Roger Rabbit, Dave Broadfoot, Martin Bronstein, Don Ferguson, and John Morgan, with technical production by Brian Hill and Bill Boyd. Production assistant David Milligan, I'm Alan McPhee. With a reminder that starting next week, Air Force moves to Sunday afternoons on most CBC network stations. Air Force is produced by Bill Howell before a live audience today at the Cabbage Town Studio in Cabbage Town. <laughs>